What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got some Destiny Exodia duels for you guys to check out. Showing off the new Destiny Hero support. And yes, you heard me correctly. Destiny Heroes and Exodia, the perfect combination and harmony. Destiny Heroes have been a good draw engine basically since forever because they're dark. So, Lord of Darkness, they're a bunch of level 8s for trade in. Also, you have Destiny Draw In. Really, with the new added support that just lets you draw so many new cards with, uh, you know, Draw Guy and and then the fact that Disc Commander is now playable once again because multiple cards can bring it back from the graveyard, the fusion, and the link monster. D heroes can basically blaze through their entire deck in uh, two turns. Like, <laughs> your opponent essentially gets one turn to play. If they do not kill you, you will 100% draw Exodia. Sometimes you can just FTK them with Exodia, but the fusion monster is just so ridiculously good. Gotta give a big shout out to Atlas Rising, guys. I have shouted this guy out before. You guys gotta go support the smaller Yugi tubers he's the one who comes up with these crazy decks and you can play destiny heroes just as a standalone and it's still very powerful because of things like a soda but if you just want to play a more fun kind of hype version of it i think that you know the exodium makes it pretty nice so guys check out atlas rising he's over 500 subscribers and he's a pretty awesome channel so you guys will see exactly what i'm talking about he's fighting against burning abyss pretty good deck activates the fusion the most absurd thing is the fact that, like, the fusion, uh, you can activate it. You can activate fusion destiny without your opponent really needing anything on the board. Like, the fact that you can activate this turn zero is really what kind of breaks this card. All the other fusions, like the Lunar Light fusion and Shadow fusion, they all require your opponent to have, like, a monster on the field. Even Cynet fusion requires you to have, like, no monsters in the extra monster zone. But being able to force burial three destiny hero monsters and then two of them have draw effects, basically, like, this Burning Abyss player. Now, granted, it, maybe he probably should have like banished the dominate guy if he would have banished it it wouldn't have triggered but he's going to attack it and this is the trap that you fall into because again he did summon this off one card he's going to bring back disc commander he's going to bring back draw guy now the thing about it is it honestly at this point of the duel it does not matter at all what your opponent does if your opponent does not kill you this turn you will 100 draw exodia there will be no other opportunity for your opponent to win he's going to draw three cards right here with disc commander and with um the draw guy and plus it's really awesome because not only do those cards serve as chump blockers, but then the draw guy comes back and you get to draw another card. You get to draw four freaking cards just off the activation of one fusion. Like, how is that not ridiculous? And once you throw in the other cards, like <laughs> the fusion draw cards, or excuse me, the uh, the so the bamboo sword cards, you know it's a wrap. Also, what's really stupid about throwing Exodia into Destiny Heroes now is because before Destiny Heroes used to just give you a whole bunch of draw power, but guess what? Now you can actually stack your freaking deck you can stack your deck you can look at the top five cards so you can actually put yourself closer to exodia which almost no deck in Yu-Gi-Oh actually has the ability to do <laughs> with the dominate guy you put exodia you know as closely or as closely to the top as possible so that you can actually hopefully draw you can see he went through his entire deck in just basically two turns not even really two turns because it's not like the second turn was fully finished this is going to be the same type of thing and even if you do go first against like the rongo bongo lock like it doesn't even matter because rongo doesn't do anything your opponent like usually those rongo decks are really powerful because they basically stop you from being able to summon or do anything like that but since you're playing a deck like chain burn essentially <laughs> exodia doesn't really care about summoning at that point once you get all your summoning in your first turn that's all you need like rongo is going to be irrelevant at that point if your opponent kills this monster and you summon those three monsters is that the game is over you get way too much advantage out of that he's gonna go for ice soda honestly I think that maybe he should have just tried to gumblar him as many times as possible. <laughs> I think that that would have been the best course of action. I don't even think he is going to go for Rongo. He's playing like a weird burning of this kind of hybrid. And it was kind of smart. The thing is, if your opponent puts dominate guy on the board, I think the best course of action is to try to banish it or to try to bounce it. Don't run it over in battle and definitely don't destroy it with a card effect because once you let it trigger, it's going to just win. It's going to win the destiny player of the duel. Whether they're playing destiny exodia or even just a regular uh destiny build the card is honestly just ridiculous like getting 3d heroes back and then having them trigger as well they get too much advantage the problem is even with him having that fog blade down he can't stop both of these attacks so 
one of them's going to go through he crashes into the gumblar dragon he's getting all his d heroes back of course he pulls back draw guy and the disc commander and at this point you know it's going to be basically the same thing that happened in the last duel main phase two all he needs to do is just activate all his draw cards he did draw exodia super early there this time he didn't have the ability to stack his deck because his uh, other dominate guy was actually negated or maybe he did stack his deck i don't think i actually saw him st uh, stack his deck but he just has so many cards like i really don't and plus i mean he could even go for like a sorry you just skull dread because he has like what five monsters on board so sorry you just skull dread could probably be really effective and then this last one this is just going to be your standard FTK with uh, with um, the Exodia or the Destiny Exodia deck. Sometimes you will just, you know, FTK your opponent because you have to think about it now that like Destiny heroes have a, a normal summon that can let them draw cards. As you just saw with Draw Guy, you throw it on the board. It instantly lets you draw. Like, I really thought, you know, Draw Guy at first, I was like, I don't really want to give my opponent cards, but <laughs> that card is actually kind of nuts. And this is the part of it. This is the part of the Destiny engine that I was talking about before where you activate D draw and you activate a lord of darkness and you're gonna activate things like trade in just a billion times with new added cards it's like yeah you can you can actually just go through your entire deck now with uh with destiny heroes <laughs> i think this is actually pretty damn awesome let's go ahead and look at the deck for the first time i actually have the deck already loaded up hopefully it doesn't go to salaman greats boom it didn't yes this is what the deck looks like on paper Again, if you did want to make just a pure version of Destiny Heroes using the new support, you could obviously do that. You would rely a little bit more on, uh, you know, like combos with Isode and Summon Sorceress. You would probably run, you know, some other like this or some other cards like Hand Traps. I mean, other than Droll and Lockbird, like ain't no Ash Blossom really going to stop. Eh, you know what? Maybe. Because <laughs> if I'm, I'm thinking about Ash Blossom stopping the draw cards, if you Ash Blossom the draw cards, you're going to lose. But if you Ash Blossom this card, Fusion Destiny, that's the card you you have to stop because this is the card that gets the deck basically rolling it's what gets malicious and this commander and draw guy all in the graveyard at the same time this card is absolutely nuts the fact that your fusion dies during the next end phase is, is just so irrelevant honestly you get all those monsters and you know your extra deck would obviously be significantly different if you were playing a standard version you know you'd probably be running a lot more link force because if you're bringing three monsters back from the graveyard and you're drawing probably two to three cards at that same point you want to be able to convert those monsters like those warrior monsters you want to be able to convert them into like boral sword and boral dragon because with the advantage or the advantage that you make like the draws you want to be able to use that like immediately and potentially try to kill your opponent so this is just a nice little fun idea guys i always knew that destiny heroes were a great draw in Engine, but now it is absurd because we got this card and this card and this card and they're all at three and now uh yeah man definitely probably the best way or one of the best ways to run exodia forget about the danger archetype where everything's kind of random and you don't know what you're going to hit anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this short little display if you did give the video a thumbs up thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos